Okay, what I'm going to be doing now is showing how to make a simple product into a variable product in WooCommerce. And I appreciate slowness for myself, so I'm going to try to do it slowly here too. Um, first, I find the product, um, you know, and it's just kind of the little things that are helpful, but this particular vendor, all of her products start with the number six, and then the next four numbers resemble a year in time. So I remember it that way. This particular product is six and then 1985, which is a year in time. So I go and I find that product and I'm going to go edit it. I'm not thrilled with the way the title has been put in. So I'm going to remove that because it's junky and I also noticed that there is not a description. I will come back and fix that later. But the first thing that I want to do is go to the attributes of the simple product that might bite me in the butt later on. These all need to be removed. The price needs to be removed. The inventory needs to be removed. The um, stock management prob probably will not need to be enabled. However, don't disable it until you get rid of the stock quantity, then you can disable it. You don't want any remnants of anything in there that might bite you in the butt later on. Um, then you want to get rid of all of your shipping information. Delete, tab, delete, tab, delete, tab, delete. Then what you have to do is you have to update it. You can't just leave it like that because it will not save. So it needs to be updated. And sometimes that takes a bit of time. We do have about 5,000 SKUs. So this website takes a little bit of time. Um, and like I said, I'm going to change the description a little bit later on. What I also need to do is add um, a couple of categories and update that, I don't need to update that now, but I do need to add a couple of categories to that just because it's, a, it's adding it as a PDF. Now, you change it to a variable product. I already have attributes set up. I have a bunch of attributes. This particular book, we need to either have it be a choice of PDF download or a paper book product. I'm going to add that. Yeah, I want to use it for variations and I want to select all of them. I've preset these up in the attributes. I did that a while ago. Yeah, I want it download and paper version. I'm going to save those attributes. That circle comes again, so you have to wait for that. Then I can go to variations. I'm done with attributes. Now, add a variation. You go, go, I'm adding two variations to this product. So I'm gonna go again. I like to keep my paper version on the top, my download version on the bottom, and I like to expand it. So I put my SKU in and I can go tab, tab, it is not downloadable, tab, it is not virtual, but tab, yes, on the paper version, I want to manage stock. You can use your space bar and that puts the check mark in to manage stock. You have to put a variation price. If you don't put a variation price, it will not show up. People will not be able to purchase it. And I'm just tabbing, putting in my stock quantity, and all of this vendor's products are approximately the same dimensions. So I've got that memorized. And I do put my customs declared value. Now I'm in the download version. I'm, this is the new one that I'm adding because it was just the paper version before, tab, tab, downloadable with my space bar, tab, downloadable with my sp space bar. I do not need to manage stock on virtual products. 
It does need to be both downloadable and virtual. You have to put your price in, otherwise it won't show up. You don't have to worry about the stock status. It is always in stock. And here is the downloadable file. I'm going to add a file. It is the wisest thing to do to always add your PDF file from this area of your back end. You can add it as an image file, but if you add it this way from the downloadable files area, it will be assured that it will go into a non-public folder. And you do want it to go into a non-public folder. So I'm gonna choose my file. I have to upload it. This particular vendor is very organized and it's very easy to find this particular file. I'm inserting it into the URL. And you, you could name the file, you don't have to. If you don't name the file, WooCommerce gives it an odd name with a bunch of letters afterwards. So I'm going to just give it a, a name. And it's best to save changes at the bottom here. You could go and up, update it right here, but it is better to save the changes down here first. And sometimes this takes a while because there are quite a few changes being saved. If you don't do it this way and you wait to save it up here, it doesn't take the first time. So now it will actually update and I am going to check it on my front end by looking it up by SKU. And there it is. And what I always check for to just uh, cross-reference and double check myself, choose an option. Choose either PDF download or paper book. Choose an option. I choose the download product. Yes, that SKU number is accurate. And if I choose the paper version, yes, this SKU number is accurate. So I have done this accurately and that is how I change a simple product to a variable product.